Hello everyone, uh, this is Akif and today we're going to have an introductory topic of artificial intelligence. So, what is artificial intelligence? I mean, people have uh, tried to define it and different people have different uh, variations when it comes to the definition. For example, the father of artificial intelligence, John McCarthy, he says, the science and engineering of making intelligent machines especially intelligent computer programs. So this is one definition and for the first time uh, this was uh, recognized when the uh, when two scientists with the name Maclock and uh, Pitts they came up with the artificial neural network concept which was uh, which then became a part and parcel of this field called as artificial intelligence. Now, different people have different definitions of artificial intelligence. We have uh, a different conception of artificial intelligence when it comes to science fiction. We have a different concept when it comes to the computer science uh, discourse, which is related to artificial intelligence. And different people come up with different definitions. And the kind of the definition that I found plausible and most tenable was uh, this definition by Patrick Winston, who is a professor in MIT. He states, it's about algorithms enabled by constraints exposed by representations that model targeted thinking, perception, and action. So he says it's all about these three key concepts, which is thinking, perception, and action. And we build models that are targeted uh, at thinking, perception, and action. And in short, there are models that represent thinking, perception, and action. And when we have this representation at hand, it helps us to know about its limitations. And at the end of the day, we have algorithms that, uh, that contain these models uh, about thinking, perception, and action. Now, if you look at the history of artificial intelligence, we have this famous uh, experiment, uh, which is about the Turing test. We all know about uh, Alan Turing, one of the uh, greatest um, computer scientists. So what, what, what happens in this experiment is that on one side we have a human, and on the other side we have a machine. And a human and a machine is made to talk to each other. And a uh, human doesn't basically know what is inside this thing. Uh, he, he doesn't know whether it's a machine or human or any animal or whatever it is. He actually is unaware of it. So they are made to have a discussion or dialogue. If the human is not able or is not able to decipher or discern whether on the other side of this or inside this box there is a machine or human, that this then this machine passes this Turing test. So when this was done successfully in 1950, uh, some people uh, started claiming that this is the birth of artificial intelligence. Uh, but there, there were a lot of critics, they said that if a machine is swindling a human being to believe that uh, it's a human or it's duping, it or uh, making him a fool that it's a machine but sorry it's a human then it doesn't mean that artificial intelligence is born then uh, this uh, experimentation kept on evolving people came up with different experimentations and one of the experiment was the chinese room experiment uh, so w w what is what happens in this chinese room experiment is that there is a guy a person is kept inside this room and there is a tomb a big book, maybe the uh, dictionary related to Chinese language, the grammar and everything. And fr from this inlet, th these people send a uh, letter and he's able to translate it by juxtaposing this letter with this tome. He keeps on comparing and responds with something in Chinese, but this person is unaware of Chinese. He doesn't know anything about Chinese language. And when the when he 
throws this letter back to these people, they realize that he is someone who is very much proficient in Chinese language and is a good Chinese speaker. So this is something which is very much like the kind of translation done on our social networking sites or on Google. We, we know that it doesn't always come up with a perfect translation. Uh, we get a taste of it what what might be the translation or what are the what is the meaning but uh, it's not the exact translation so we clearly saw an example where someone uh, doesn't know about the semantics of any particular language and yet he's able to do uh, the uh, translation so this was another experiment and it was done in 1960 Then this field kept on evolving. People came up with different uh, inventions or uh, the, the creativity uh, bloomed uh, when it came to artificial intelligence field and people came up with a, a diagnosis, uh, which was a medical diagnosis, and it proved out to be much more accurate than uh, the human doctor. So it was much more accurate than the humans, human doctors. But it was never uh, brought in the market and it remained in the labs. Also, we saw uh, some kind of softwares which was like ELISA. ELISA was again a, a program which was created by uh, Joseph Wesenbaum uh, in MIT um, Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. So, th this is a, a kind of a, uh, app. I mean, we can, if we want to understand it, it's just like an app, but it was in 1960s. Uh, so it's just like you type something, you chat with something, and it replies with some sort of a banter or a witty answer or something that make, will make you laugh. Then it kept on evolving, and we had other things introduced in this field like fuzzy logic, artificial neural network, and a genetic algorithm. So these things also were discussed in this field of artificial intelligence but if you talk about the contemporary times we have the likes of social networking sites where you will often see on the right side of your screen there are some uh, recommendations presented and some rec recommendations made by these social networking sites so it's all about uh, artificial intelligence where uh, d data mining is into picture machine learning is into uh, is going on in the background and uh, they are able to uh, recommend you something based on uh, maybe the kind of uh, likes you hit or the kinds of comments you write or about the message you send back and forth. So on the basis of that there is this uh, machine learning uh, working behind uh, in the background and they are able to give you some recommendations. Also, uh, artificial intelligence is something that's going to play a crucial role in Internet of Things. We know billions of devices, maybe 50 billion, 60 billion, or even 100 billion devices will be on uh, Internet. And it could be anything. It could be a pen, it could be a bottle, it could be a mat, it could be your shirt, and all these entities will be involved in the decision making and those decisions will be very smart decisions and this will be possible only because of artificial intelligence. So if you look at the timeline, uh, we saw the Turing test, then uh, after that we saw Chinese room experiment, we saw something being defined by John McAfee which they called as artificial intelligence, then we s talked about ELISA, the uh, it is kind of a program made in M MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab, and uh, things kept on evolving. We also talked about artificial neural network and the fuzzy logic and genetic algorithm, all these things being discussed uh, in this kind of discourse. And in current times, we see uh, machine learning and deep learning, which uh, are uh, being discussed along uh, with artificial intelligence. So. Uh, when you see that in current times we have all these smart decisions, smart decisions being made, and uh, these decisions 
um, sometimes make you, you know, wonder, I mean, what sort of intelligence is working behind? How come they are able to recommend something which I really like or something which I'm obsessed with? So this definition then gets modified. So Patrick Winston uh, modifies this definition, which actually was, it's about algorithms enabled by constraints exposed by representations that model targeted thinking, perception, and action. And he says that, and this is an age when we begin to realize that the definition up there is actually a little incomplete. Because much of our intelligence has to do not with thinking, perception, and action. So he says that it's not only this, thinking, perception, and action, but it's also acting separately, but with loops that tie all those together. So he says that it's not all about thinking, perception, and action, acting separately, but it's also loops that tie all those together. So that's how these are able to uh, make smart decisions. So that was all for today. Thanks and have a nice day.